Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Ashley, I am Movies and Books Girl and today I thought I'd share with you the books in my Doctor Who collection. I've not collected in quite a long time to be honest and I don't remember actually finishing any of these books or if I did it was so long ago that I actually really can't remember them. I'm sure I have completed some of them but yeah let's get into some of these. So the first one I've got here is Doctor Who, A Book of Monsters by David J. Howe and this was published in the 90s and it's basically just going through the different decades, so the 60s, 70s and 80s about different Doctor Who villains and how the, how they were, how the costumes were, the people who played them, everything like that. It's quite, it's got loads of photos in here, it's got lots of details about different monsters. So yeah, I've got this one. Can't really, don't know if I actually read this or if I've just kind of peeked through it. But yeah, it's got loads of different monsters. Some of them you'll recognise from Nur Doctor Who, some of them you won't. But I am interested in rereading this and kind of just getting back into Doctor Who because for a while I've not really been watching it or reading any Doctor Who books or anything like that. So yeah. This is the first one that is kind of on my pile. This one is more just facts about the costumes and stuff. So it's a bit different to the other actual just novels, um, fiction works that I will be more reading. So going on to the actual fiction books, I do have quite a small thing here. So the first one I have here is Forever Autumn by Mark Morris. And... I really do actually like this cover. It's got a really nice grey feel to it. It looks very like Halloween-y. Probably so because it also says autumn. That, that probably helps and has a giant pumpkin on it. And the back of this says it is almost Halloween in the sleepy New England town of Blackwood Falls. Leaves litter, lawns and sidewalks, paper skeletons hang the windows and carved pumpkins layer from the por layer from front porches. The doctor and Martha soon discover that something wrong dormant has awoken and this will be no ordinary Halloween. What is the secret of the ancient tree in the book discovered tangled in its roots? What rises from the churchyard at night, sealing the lips of, all, of the only witnesses? Why are the harmless trappings of Halloween suddenly taking on a creepy new life of their own? As nightmarish creatures prowl the streets, the Doctor and Martha must battle to prevent the townspeople and themselves from suffering a grisly fate. So, this one really gives me vibes of um, Sleepy Hollow, and I think that will be quite a fun read. Um, but it does come to October and all that time of the year, especially if it's based on Halloween as well. Seems perfect for the all the, for the Halloween time. So I probably will try and save this one for then and give this one a read. Carrying on with that, we have another one here, and that is The Wooden Heart by Martin Day. I don't, I think I started this one in the past, but I don't remember if I actually ever finished it. I'm not sure but it's got a really nice green cover it kind of gives me quite spring vibes actually so maybe I'll get to this one soon let's have but let's have a look see what this one is actually about so a vast starship is seemingly deserted is spinning slowly in the void of deep space Martha and the doctor explore this drifting tomb and discover that they may not be alone after all who survived the disaster that overcame the rest of the crew what happens to the power of vessel and why is a stretch of wooded countryside suddenly appeared in the middle of the craft? As the Doctor and Martha journey through the forest, they find a mysterious fog-bound village, a village traumatised by missing children and prophecies of its own destruction. That sounds interesting. I like the fact that it's basically set on a, on a ship as well. Um, but it seems like the people aren't aware that it is a ship, so it should be quite interesting. And... Yeah, don't really know too much about these. As I said, I think if I did read them, it was when I was like between the ages of 10 and 15 and I'm now 25. So it's been a long time since I've actually read these. And yeah, also my voice is going. I'm so sorry about that, guys. <clears throat> the next one we have here is called The Feast of the Drowned. And I was actually going to use this for a TBR prompt that involved being at sea. But apparently that ship is not at sea. It looks like it's at sea. I don't know if you can tell that, but there's water. But no, it's partly not at sea, which is really frustrating because I was going to have this one on my CBR already. But yeah, let's have a look, see what this one is. So when a naval cruiser sinks in the mysterious circumstances in the North Sea, all aboard and lost, Rose is saddened to learn that 
that the brother of her friend Keisha was among the dead, and yet he appears to them as a ghostly apparition, begging to be saved from the coming feast, the feast of the drowned. As the dead crew haunt loved ones all over London, the Doctor and Rose are drawn to a chilling mystery, what sank the ship and why, and the cruiser's record was told to up the Thames what, what sinister force came with it. The river's dark waters are hiding an even darker secret as, as preparations for the feast near the conclusion. So I was going to use this for set sea, but it seems like it's like all on land and all over London and that the ship is kind of brought to sea and things. So I didn't think it would count, but I am looking forward to getting to this one. It does sound really spooky and yeah, I'm really in the mood for reading some Doctor Who books. So this one might be one, if I can get up my TBR soon, will probably be the first that I do pick up. Carrying on, because we do have still more of here. So the next one we have is The Art of Destruction. This one doesn't really give me any seasonal vibes, so I can just read this whenever. Um, but it does look like it's kind of more set in space, just due to kind of like the rock shapes and things. But let's have a look. So the TARDIS lands in 22nd century Africa in the shadow of a dormant volcano. Aggie team... Agri teams are growing new foodstuffs in the baking soil to help feed the world's starving millions. But the Doctor and Rose have, have detected an alien signal somewhere close by. When a nightmare force starts surging along the dark volcanic tunnels, the Doctor realises an ancient trap has been sprung. But who is it meant for? And what is the secret of the eerie statues that stand at the heart of the volcano? Dragged into a centuries-old conflict, Rose and the Doctor have to fight for their lives and as alien hands practice the art of destruction all around them. That sounds good. Um, I do like that it's set in the future. I like that it's set in Africa as well. So it's a different setting to what I usually read from as well. So yeah, I'm not sure when I'll get to this. Same with all the others. I'm not sure when I will get to them, but should be interesting. Going on to more of a country sort of vibe, we have this one here, which is Peacemaker by James Swallow. I really do like the fact that it's kind of got like a country gunslinger sort of person on it. Set clearly in, it clearly looks like it's set in America, like Texas, but we'll find out in a second. So the peace, the peace and quiet of remote homestead in the 1880s American West is shattered by the arrival of two shadow, shadowy outriders searching for the healer. When the farmer refuses to help them, they raise the house to the ground using guns that shoot bolts of energy instead of bullets. In the town of Radwater, the Doctor and Martha learn of the, of the snake oil salesman whose, pa whose, patient, whose patent medicines actually cure his patients. But when the Doctor and Martha investigate, they discover that the truth is stranger and far more dangerous. Caught between the law of the gun and the, deeply, and the deadly plans of intergalactic men mercenaries, the Doctor and Martha are about to discover just how wild the West can become. So yeah, more like a country book. Has some, um, I do like that set in the past. I'm trying to read outside of just normal every day. So knowing that I do have some more books that are set in the past and the future is definitely great for me. And then we definitely have a space book on our hands here with this one. We have The Pirate, the Pirate Loop by Simon Gurrier and Let's be honest here, if that's not space, I don't know what it is. Like, it's very space vibes for me. So, the Doctor's been everywhere and, and ever and anywhere in the whole universe and seems to know all the answers. But ask him what happens to the battleship Brilliant and he doesn't have the first idea. Did it fall into a sun or a black hole? Was it shot down in the first moments of the Galactic War? And what's this about a secret experimental dive? The Doctor is skittish, but if Martha is so keen to find out, he'll land the TARDIS on the, bril on the Brilliant a few days before it vanishes, so that he can see for themselves. Soon the Doctor learns the awful truth, and Martha learns, what learns that you need to be careful what you wish for. She certainly wasn't hoping for mayhem, death, and badger face space pirates. I'm sorry, badger faced? Badger faced? I want it. I love all those sort of things. I, I love when it's like non-human human things. I'm currently watching Sweet Tooth and there's a character in it called, is it Bobby? I think it's Bobby and he's basically like a giant beaver and oh, he's the cutest thing. I seem to love more animalistic creatures 
in books these days. Um, it's the same when I'm watching things. So I really want to read this. I really want to see how cute they are or how described cute they are because they sound adorable and I want to look after them now. <laughs> The next one here we have is Martha in the Mirror by Justin Richards and it does have a really spooky vibes to this. I like the fact that the mirror isn't actually matching her and it's got like a really old castle looking thing. It gives me kind of like Halloween-y sort of vibes here but I'm not really sure. So let's have a look. So it says castle extremists, whoever holds it can control the provinces either side that, that, can ha that have been at war for centuries. Now the castle is about to play host to the signing of a peace treaty. But as the Doctor and Martha find out, not everyone wants the war to end. Who is the strange little girl who haunts the castle? What is the secret of the book the Doctor finds? It's pages from thin, brittle glass. Who is the hooded figure that watches from the shadows? And what is the secret of the legendary mortal mirror? The Doctor and Martha don't have long to wait to find for the answers. An army is on the march and the castle will soon be under siege once more. So yeah. Definitely gives me Halloween vibes, um, especially with like Haunted Castle, I feel like that. But it should be a fun read when I do get to pick this one up because it sounds, it sounds like it would be fast paced if the writing style is to my liking. So yeah, can't wait for this one as well. I, say, I feel like I'm saying that a lot, but I'm sorry guys. The next one we have here is called Sick Building. It kind of gives me... Um, Under the Dome sort of vibes from Stephen King. I've not read it, but it looks like like a giant dome over this like village um, or castle or building or whatever and that's basically what happens there. So not really sure what this one is about, but I don't like all those teeth. All those teeth are kind of scary to be honest. Don't want to be around that monster. So yeah. Tiernan's World, a planet covered in a wintry in a wintry woods and roaming by saber-toothed tigers and other savage beasts. The doctor is here to warn Professor Tiernan and his wife and their son that a terrible danger is on its way. The Tiernans live in luxury in a fantastic, futuristic, fully automatic dream house under an unimpen unimpenetrable force shield, but that won't protect them from the voracious craw. A huge and angry sorry, a huge and hungry alien creature is heading remorselessly remorseless? mercilessly towards their home. When it arrives, everything will be devoured. Can they get away in time? Will the force shield cracking up in the dream house itself deciding who or should not leave? Things things are looking desperate. So this one actually kind of gives me, just from that, gives me kind of more winter vibes. So maybe I'll save this one for, for winter, maybe December, something like that, just when it is more snowy outside. But yeah. I like the fact that the dome is like, nope, you're not leaving. We are going to have you die in our in our luxury dream home. Next one, again, very much does give me Halloween vibes. And that is The Many Hands. It looks like zombies here. Um, might not be, but we'll have a look. So Edinburgh 1759. Well, I want to read it because, you know, I live in Edinburgh. And I love books that are set in Scotland. Don't read enough of them, really want to get to more of them. So definitely want to get to this one as much as I can. So already, good start. Uh, the Nor Lock is being filled in. If you ask the soldiers there, they'll tell you that it's sinking cesspool that the city can do without. But that doesn't explain why the workers won't go near the place without an armed guard. That doesn't explain why they whisper stories about the lock giving up its dead, about the sinister who walked into its church 12 years after he died. He, it doesn't explain... At, it doesn't explain why, as they work, they whisper about a man called the Doctor and the many hands of Alexandra Munro. Oh, okay, I really want to get to this one. Um, probably more than others, it's set in Scotland. I am wanting to read more books set in Scotland. I feel like, as a Scottish person, I don't read that many Scottish books. I'm really wanting to change that because I just feel like I, I, I feel like I should. I feel like most of the books I read are either set in England or are from English authors or set in America. And I do love Scotland so, so, so much. I love being here. I love being full on Scottish. I just adore my country so much. It's so beautiful. Um, and I don't think it gets enough in terms of books. So I do want to read more either authors or books that are just set in Scotland in general. So I do want to pick this one up. Um, 
Not sure when I will pick it up though, but I do want to really get to this one. When I, when I get a prompt that'll fit this, I probably will try to fit this one in as much as I can. We're almost done. So this is the second last book here and we have The Price of Paradise. And I actually really like this cover. It is really, it looks really nice. Um, I like like the greenness of this. And this is so, so stiff that I don't think I've ever actually read this one before or picked it up. So no idea what this one is. So Laylora, Le The Paradise Planet. A world of breathtaking beauty where the peace-loving inhabitants live in harmony with their environment, or do they? The Doctor and Rose arrive to find that the once perfect ecosystem is showing signs of failing. The Paradise Planet has become a death trap as terrifying creatures from ancient lenses appear and stalk the land. Is there a connection between the human explorers who have crash-landed and the savage monsters? And what price might one human have to pay to save his only home he has ever known? The Doctor and Rose are in a race against time to find a curse for the sick planet. So that one sounds like it could be read any time of the year really, but it sounds really sweet. Not like sweet in like a nice way, but it sounds like sweet as in that they're trying to save this planet sort of thing. But yeah, I don't know really what to expect of this one, but let's hope that it is a fun time. And then the final book that we do have here is one that I am so sure I have read, or if I haven't read it, I've read at least part of it and then maybe forgotten I was reading it, so don't put it, so put it down, because when I was a teenager, I just, I just done that a lot, to be honest. Um, so that is The Nightmare of Black Island, and this one is by Mike Tucker, and it's definitely been opened because it's got the, it seems really wide open to read and things so I've definitely read it at one point and but I really can't remember what this one is so let's have a look at see what the last book is about so on a lonely stretch of stretch of Welsh coast coastline a fisherman is killed by a hideous creature from beneath the waves when the doctor and Rose arrive they discover a village where the children are plagued by nightmares and the nights are ruled by monsters the villagers suspect that ailing industrial Nathaniel Martin is to blame but the Doctor has suspicions of his own. Who are the ancient figures that sleep in the old priory? And what is the light that glows in, in the disused lighthouse on Black Island? As the children's nightmares get worse, the Doctor and Rose discover an alien plot to resurrect an, an ancient evil. That sounds really spooky. It gives me vibes that just makes me really want to know more. Um, I do wish I could just pick this one up just now just reading them back makes me really want to read it so yeah that was the last one of these I got I do like that I've not mentioned this already but I do like that they're all actually quite hard back hardbacks um they are all hardback covers they're just not ones that have like dust sleeves or anything and that's why I do like my hardbacks when I do get them so yeah I have got here let's have a quick count so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 12 Doctor Who books here, 11 that are just fiction books and one that is more about the creation of the monsters and costumes, everything like that. So yeah, um, if you are a Doctor Who fan, please do tell me what your favourite monster is down below. And if you've read any of these books, please do let me know. Also, if any of these books actually interest you, let me know which one down below because I am interested. I don't know anyone who reads Doctor Who books, so it'd be nice to find out some new people who do actually do that. And yeah, that's everything for me today. Thank you for watching guys and I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye.